I grew up in the 80s. I had He-Man, Star Wars. I got those toys. I couldn't be Luke Skywalker, you know. I didn't relate. I didn't feel sad when I played with these things, but what if? What if? What if I had a little Faye Langston Hughes? Or if I had Harriet Tubman? What effect would that have? Where would I be now? How much more conscious of my history and where I come from if I had that? I noticed there weren't that many African-American sculptures, so I just started making them myself. But now since I make these things, I can go back and have that experience. When I'm creating them, I'm thinking about what we went through, how far we came. I'm thinking about that individual person, acknowledging the excellence of my people because our story is the American story. I am a Corey Hanzo. I'm a sculptor, painter, graphic artist. Bottom line, I just create whatever I want. All this is self-taught, I had to learn this. I said the tools are there, you just, a lot of people don't know. I've sculpted a piece in like a couple days. It, it really can range. Like there's been some pieces that's taken me almost a year to, you know, to complete. I sculpt in clay and then I cast in resin. Every piece I make is still one of the kind, no matter even if there's more than one of that specific person. When I mix it with this other part and then I pour it inside the mold, the head sculpt in here should be done within 10 minutes. I can pull it out and show it to you. My dad also was an artist. He was very good with sketching. So I, I asked him to teach me how to draw and he gave me a stick figure and said, fill the lines in. It taught me to teach myself. To this day, I still start with that stick figure pad. I'm working on a James Baldwin piece right here. Malcolm X, I have like Addie Mae Collins. Um, she's one of the four little girls that was in the Birmingham, Alabama uh, church uh, bombing. I have two people here whose careers are based off of uh, being able to read and write. Harriet Tubman is responsible for everybody else here. If it wasn't for Harriet Tubman, there wouldn't have been any of these people. All of my art, I call it Afro-pop because it's um, African-American and pop culture. I play off nostalgia, history, the subcultures within my people's culture, put it together and present it in a package meant to uplift and empower. To be honest, I was working a nine to five job. I had been there for about five years. Um, I didn't get the respect I felt I deserved. And I decided I'm gonna sit at my desk every day and teach myself to sculpt until you fire me. By the time they fired me, I already had evolved enough that I had pieces that I could hit the ground with my feet running. Welcome to Cherry Street Pier. It's an experiment. What if we took a whole bunch of artists, all different and unique, and we put them in like a community, just like Ray Street Pier, where you can walk along and look at the waterfront. The only difference is there's a bunch of artists on the side where you can actually go and look and just see them creating. Truthfully, to be honest, I didn't even think I would be able to have a space in here because I didn't think they would get my black figurines. In my mind, I was like, they're not gonna let me in there. And it was the exact opposite. I started on the corner of my bed sculpting and at my desk at work, not knowing that they would provide me a space where I can just have a playland. Before COVID, my door was just open. You could just walk in and sit right there and just start talking to me while I'm working. But it wasn't about me trying to sell something to you. It was an environment where I could go crazy. They just let me be me and share with the public. It's not just locked down to just, you know, only African-Americans love my work. White people come in and they'll say, thank you for this. They told me I'm an activist, like I'm doing my part. They wanted to bring children here so they could see that it's possible, you know, to do uh, things like this. A lot of us are conditioned not to see our potential, no matter what we can do. I never go, I'm good enough, I'm good enough. I think a lot of youth in the black community needs to hear it, as well as a lot of people, period, need to know their potential. You'll be much happier doing what you want to do, no matter what it is. My thing is to say, look, man, whatever it is you want to do, you're worth the investment, invest in yourself. But not everyone is built the same way. We're all individuals. And there are a lot of us that have a lot that we could contribute on our own to the culture, to society, to the future, if we're allowed to have that open, free thinking that we are all cool. Like not just that celebrity's cool, not just that athlete is cool, not just, the, like not I'm cool. We all are dope, we all have the ability.